Yeah. Shalom. Welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabados of Damar, together with my co-host Mark Ronich of Statewide News Service and jbiztechvalley.com. Well, Rabbi, you know, I always like to bring in Jewish business owners into the program and, and have them as our guests, and I always like the arts also. So our favorite guest here today is Howard Glassman, who's not only a Jewish business owner, but he's also uh, runs a, a bar where a lot of people play right. a lot of music. It's called The Low Beat. The Low Beat. <laughs> and he used to run Valentine's, which was on New Scotland Avenue near Madison. Right. But he changed the name, rebranded, and he's now on uh, Quail and Central. Uh, Central. Central. Yeah, yeah and right, right next to Pauly's Hotel, which right. is right on Quail. Yeah. And so you're killing two birds with one stone today. So to speak. There you go. There <laughs> but you the, go. Uh, and across from WAMC. Right across the street. Right. Absolutely. Now, you used to manage the Linda. I did for six years. Yeah, what yeah. happened? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Okay. Uh, you know, there was a restructuring over there at WAMC. And, uh, it seems know, to always be a restructuring. Always, yeah, there's... I have to tell you, I started my career at WAMC. Oh, we, we've, we've talked about that before, yeah. 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 And that was my first gig uh, when, while I was still in college. Mm -hmm. I got, as a like, news reporter? As a news reporter, morning edition, and the midday magazine, and, sure. and the morning newscasts, and I would get in at 6 in the morning or 5.30, clip the newspaper clippings for Dave Galletly, who was news director, and he would uh, do the he'd do all the reading and he'd do the newscasts and stuff. But uh, once in a while, I'd go out and cover a story, and then that would be played on WAMC. And one of my, you know, I, that's how I got into the Capitol. He kept sending me down to report on Governor Carey at the time, and you know the other uh, other elected officials. So I got to cover the political beat for WAMC. And then all of a sudden, they did a restructuring. They were on Madison Avenue at the time. Right. And a big mansion. And then they wanted to move out of there, or they, they broke away from Albany Med, which is how you got WAMC, Albany Medical College. I remember that. And right. they broke away from there, and they went independent. And they had this, Alan Shartok had this coup that he uh, just kicked people out <laughs> and restructured the board. And then all, and him and Dave Galletly sort of ran the show. And then shortly after, they fired three people who totaled like 150 years of broadcast brilliance. And uh, it was just amazing how cold that whole thing was. And then they went out to WMHT in Schenectady for a while. And uh, they, on Fern Avenue, 17 Fern Avenue. Right, in Woodlawn and, area. Yeah, yeah. and then they, they uh, had their shop at WAMC. And then they got this, then they moved somewhere else, and now they're in this building on uh, Central, Central Near Quail. But mainly you're into entertainment. So, you're looking for always well, entertainment for well, the Well, then WAMC opened this other, uh, took over this bank building, right. and they called it the Linda. All right. And that was named after someone I forgot. Linda but, Norris. Uh, uh, her husband, her and her husband Bob were big uh, supporters of the station and the arts. That's okay. why. Um, and, and Bob uh, made a donation, in, uh, and they called it the Linda Norris Auditorium. Shortened to the Linda. To the Linda. Yeah. And you were the general manager. I was the general manager, yeah. Were you I, the first general manager? No, I no. was probably five or six down the line. Okay. Uh, but I was, I lasted the longest. You lasted the longest. <laughs> six years I did. So that's what I mean by there was always a restructuring. Always. It, even yeah. in the late 70s, all the way right. through, it seems like Dr. Shartok just doesn't have a, well, a, a very, um, he doesn't like stability and have, you know, he likes to, to change up. And that's yeah. in radio, that happens a lot. Right. I mean, it's no fault to anyone, but that's just But if you the think about the over the years, uh, the talent that has gone through oh, that station, uh, the awards that, that have been won because of it, right. it's just amazing. But Dr. Amazing. Shartok takes all the credit, even though it was someone else's well, work. It's his he name takes, on, the, on, right. the, on the byline, on the top there, sure. <laughs> sure. So you went from the, ra the radio business into well, uh, well, entertainment? I went, to I went to school, actually, for radio. So it, it all kind of came full circle as well, because I did, um, you know, I read the underwriting credits, and I hosted a program called Live at the Linda, which um, mm -hmm. we took uh, the recordings of the shows there, edited them, and then played them back on Wednesday nights. And uh, I hosted that show. And I was on the round table on Thursdays talking about what was coming up. And every now and then I'd, you know, pop up on the air. They put my radio experience to use a little bit. 
Well, you have a great voice for radio. Well, thank you. I mean, yeah, thank for you. broadcasting, I should say. Thank so you. You do. Because yeah. you uh, just don't have a face for radio. You have definitely, a definitely <laughs> don't have. I, no. I was never interested in television. Okay. Uh, you know, if you want to black this out right no, now, that'd be no, fine. No, we're not, not uh, going to do that. I <laughs> actually have a show uh, right now on uh, WEXT, 97.7 yeah. FM. On uh, Saturday nights, which is a Vermont station. No, it's um, it's here. Uh, WMHT. It's part of WMHT. Oh, okay. It's. Um, I thought it used to. Okay. Nope. That's uh, that's where I was. Long. That's my first radio job. Oh, okay. Second radio job. You know what I'm talking. Okay. Yes, I do. So I do that once a week and uh, ten to midnight on Saturdays. Wow. It's pre-recorded. So. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I'm usually in bed before then. Well, Saturday yeah. is a big night. If I'm over at the bar, yes. If I'm home, I'm, I'm usually Let's talk up. about the bar business where you are presently. Um, what made you go into the bar business from radio? I mean, I entertainment here, entertainment yeah, there. Yeah. So you could see a similarity. But Necessity. Isn't it, they always say it's a tough business. It's, That's it's, what everybody It's Well, next to radio, me. it's one of the worst businesses I've ever been involved with. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Just the cutthroat business of it all. I mean, um, just for entertainment or just trying to get customers? In everything. It's just, you know, 24-7. It's just tough. Uh, between getting customers in, getting entertainment in, complying with all the rules and regulations that not only the city but the state, county have, have put out there. Um, yeah, I don't know what the turnover. I'm not a businessman. I'm mm -hmm. a rabbi. But it just seems to me that... The restaurant, you see a restaurant open up, right. within a half a year it's another. You could just watch like every half a year, some spots, some locations. Yeah. So that's tough. You know, you put money and renovate it and there's a, I don't there's know a what number. the turnover you is. You can go online and find out what the number is of new restaurants that fail. It's the percentage, it's up there. It's, it's, sure. it's, it's up there. It's north of 60%. Yeah. Really? It, it, it must oh, be. Yeah. Yeah. It must be. Yeah, it's a tough business. So how did you succeed with Valentine's? Was, was that the first bar and the only no, bar that you I, uh, To kind of get back to, okay. to the beginning, uh, I did radio for a while, right. and I developed a little bit of a following, Had some, made some friendships, uh, quit radio around here, moved out to California to do it, came back, and couldn't find a job. Couldn't find anything. I mean, this was back in the late 80s, early early 90s, very late 80s, early 90s. And a friend of mine from radio, uh, he was a bartender, listener, said, "Hey, I'm gonna I'm buying bogies on uh, well, on Ontario, 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 Ontario and Madison, right. and uh, you're gonna book it. You're gonna manage it and book it." And I'm like, "I've been in bars for the last I don't know how many years. I have no idea." how to book bands, or how to manage a bar. And he's like, oh, you did radio, you know all the bands, just get NRBQ and we'll be fine. I'm like, I can do that. Uh, so we took over Bogies, which you know, at the time when they bought it was kind of a down and out beyond a dive. It was, it was a dirty, rundown bar. And we spent months and months in there, just me and uh, my friend Barry, who owned it, and his partner Scott, and a few others. Fixed it up, and for the seven and a half years I was there, uh, booked, you name it, we booked it. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much any up and you coming. You can get game. local entertainment you're talking about? Local, or? regional, national. I, really? We, we got, people you know, come there? People yeah. come there. People come from all over. Well, there was a void that in the late 80s or mid 80s when this uh, very big um, music venue, J.B. Scott's, J. B. closed Scott's. down. And when they, they had a fire, I believe. They had a fire. As a matter of fact, J.B. Scott's was right across from WAMC. Yeah. Uh, uh, I believe it's now Richter's yes. and a beauty yes. supply place of sorts. So, yeah, they had a fire. They closed down, and then there was a, a void. Then a little, little places pop up, 288 Lark, the Chateau over in Rensselaer, uh, Duck Soup, mm -hmm. or the Chateau down in Albany, Duck Soup in Rensselaer. And they all kind of closed, and then the QE2 opened up. Mm -hmm. And that was it for a while, and, and then both These are the same people that just, like yourself, and then they just go somewhere else, or it's just new people trying their hand, with, thinking they're going to be better than everybody well, else? With 288, it was a Char short sleeve and her husband, Dave. They went from 288, where they managed it, to um, QE2, and they opened it. And they were, I mean, I mean... Do they still own it now? Th no, uh, no, they they are long gone from there. But I, that used to be a white tower. Used to be a white tower. Yeah. Or white tower, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, but anybody who does live music in the area owes um, a huge debt to those two, especially but, Char. You know, like besides the business aspect mm. of it, recently in Troy, there's another aspect. You know, a few, and I don't even know all the details, but a few guys get drunk. 
and then there's a whole hubble So besides right. just trying to get entertainment, try to get people good food right. and drink, then you got to worry about a few schmoes, as we say in the Jewish business, a few schmoes, and they could almost literally ruin a guy's reputation. They, that's what they, they can. Did in Troy. Yeah, well, that's why you, um, you make sure your security, your, your doormen, your bouncers are certified. So they know how to defuse What's a situation. What's certified? How do you get to certified as a uh, doorbell? It, it, let's see. It's about ninety dollars. I think you take a course. Yeah. And really? It, yeah, it, I didn't know they're that. really. I, I'm There's telling some old you. Football and player over well, here. You, That's what I always. Well, the old football pays, player would just who, pick somebody up and throw them, and then you'd get a lawsuit. Yeah. So who pays for the nine? Who pays the nine dollars? The bar owner or the individual? Uh, you know what? For uh, some of my guys, I did that, and for others that came in. They already had it. Yeah. From, okay. But, you know, as when I tell them when they come in now, if they want to get the certification, I said, if you do it, go get it. You pay for it. Because then if you move or you go anywhere, you can work wherever you want. Wherever you want. Because they just know how to handle difficult situations. That's what they're being taught. It, exactly. You know, you don't, you don't grab somebody in the bar. You don't hit somebody in the bar. You don't ever hit someone. You get them out of the bar, and then you call the police. Or, you, you know, you just hope they go on their way. But you don't, you don't provoke them. You know, you do everything you can not to start so a So you ball. have to watch someone over drinking. Hey, you know, you see that guy's got five drinks for me. You want to sell him another drink. Hey, give me another one. Hey, pal, you got enough. That's, that's the bartender, too. And, yeah. you know, they'll make eye contact and they'll say, this guy, you know, yeah, get him he's out. out of here. Um, you know, if there was a solid piece of wood, which, <clears throat> I'll yeah. not, you know, we, we, we're pretty good that way. We don't, um, we got a reputation early on as we don't put up with that stuff. So if you want to come in and start trouble, so You're, was, was that bogeys? That well, was no, that, that was Valentine's. Bogeys, Valentine's, Valentine's. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, Valentine's, I, I, I bought the business. Because I'll tell you that you know there was a, it, it's it was a reputation at least in my circles, and mm -hmm. maybe there were other circles that said mm -hmm. said differently that Valentine's was a towny bar, and it was very, uh, it, it didn't feel safe. Really. And Might have been the area, the the neighborhood. I, that so I, how did you? Now I, I think that you're akin, somewhat with the, the Valentine situation to Cocapelli's in Troy. Now, when you saw what happened in January mm -hmm. at Cocapelli's, right. did you shake your head? Did you say, "Oh, they could have done this differently"? What, what was your reaction to the Cocapelli's? What really happened? I don't know if anybody knows what really happened. Um, you know, the owners and the patrons blame it on the police, the police blame it on the owners, the patrons blame it on, you know. Uh, everybody's blaming it. Everybody's, everybody's blaming and, and there was videotape, mm -hmm. but I don't think there was audio to it. So um, we, we never had that kind of situation for, for live music there. Um, you and, and you don't serve food. At Valentine's, we didn't. We have the, um, the pizzeria was next door. There was always a pizzeria, so right. we had a menu if you want something. Um, but at the at the lobby, we have a kitchen. We we serve food. Okay. Yep. Now, is that helpful in terms of because food absorbs the alcohol? Well, we only do lunch right now. Uh, we're we're trying to build up the lunch business so we can open at night. Um, you know, I don't know if if the food absorbs the alcohol. I mean, if you have, you know, if somebody has ten beers and you know and ten a pizza. and a pizza. Is it going to be helpful? I, you know, it's like who, the old wives' tale of black coffee. You drink black coffee, you yeah. sober up. That doesn't work. Okay. Your patronage, because you're in Central Avenue, is mainly college students? No. Um, you know, everybody thinks that. You know, yeah. wait till the college kids come back. Well, you know, most of the college kids are 18, 19, yeah, 20. Right. Um, for our shows, we do 18 and up, and we're pretty strict with the, with the um, notifications on the, the fingers, on the hands. Um, that but most 21. of our. Right, but. It, I've noticed, and this is going back to the bogeys days, it started there, the college kids aren't really into the live music that we present. Um, so what's the different kind of music you're saying? They're more into what? dance music, where mm -hmm. there's a DJ up on stage playing the dance, at least around in this area. There's a small group of college students from RPI, SUNY, St. Rose, Union, um, It'll go out and see live music, but for the most part, it, you put a DJ up there with a laptop, you'll do thousands of kids. And you know, if I, I did a show this past Sunday night, which was co-sponsored by WCDB, we had 23 paid, 23 people paid to see okay. this show, okay. which isn't good. No, yeah. no. So um, what's your capacity once you're saying that? 75, 75 to 100. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. On any given night, or it's mainly your. Hopefully Friday night during services to Jewish kids, but uh, but in any case, <laughs> right. Friday night, Saturday night right. is your big nights. I mean, depends on the band. 
Really? You know, we, you we've had, we, the we've had shows on Sundays, Mondays, Tuesdays, where depending on who the artist is, mm -hmm. we get 75, 100 people. Really? Out. That's yeah. very good. Yeah. So there's an entrance fee. You know, I'm sorry, I'm yeah. a little naive. No, no, I don't go to bars. It's, right. Uh, you cover, know, cover it, it's yeah. Well, it's it's a cover charge and, or a ticket fee, depending on who the act is. Like we sell pre-sale tickets for national acts because um, they're going to really attract. We hope. Yeah. We hope. Um, is so yeah. there a website? What's the low beat? The lo it's thelowbeat.com. Okay. Yep. Simple. Straight to the point. We have a Facebook page. You as well. Once you come in, you don't have to drink or have you're to. No, there's a, nobody. I mean, you know, there's. We hope if you're coming in with a group, we hope that there's a designated driver. I mean, short term, there are bars that you know last this long because they they try to pry you with the alcohol, sell, 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 and once you get out the door, they don't care, but they should. Uh, I've been doing this for now twenty something years. There's a long term. You know, for your peace of mind. Yeah, right. You know, um, whereas the doormen are taught to, you know, know who should come in and who shouldn't. The bartenders as well know when to cut somebody off. You know, they have to know when to cut somebody off. You can't just keep serving them, you know, if well, they've had enough. What advice would you have for a bar like Coca Pelli's or for what's going on in Fourth Street in Troy? That what, what advice would you have to for them? I mean, just as a success, as someone yeah. who's done this successfully. You know, I, I guess it would all be know your crowd or what you want to attract. I don't know what kind of crowd they were attracting, but I know there's problems down in that area. So I don't know if it's a, a rave crowd, if it's a heavy metal crowd, if it's a... It might not even be a music crowd. It could well, just be... Well, there's the Ruck, which is uh, RPI students because okay. the owner is the rugby coach oh. at RPI. Okay, all right. And then you have the other, uh, another bar that gets really, I'll say, an all-white crowd. Which one is this? Um, the, there's another uh, bar that's My experience on second, in, uh, on second in Broadway. My experience in Troy is the Ale House, right. which is where I go. Um, so, Sometimes and then Coca Pelli's and up until January was attracting a black crowd. Okay, yeah, I you know I. I and then there was October of 2013. There was a U Albany homecoming party at a bar two blocks down in Troy. In Troy, hmm. and they came and they maxed out that bar. So these 400 students or whatever came down the block to Coca Pelli's. They allowed 80 of them in. Yeah. So you still had 300 students out right. on the street. And they got raucous, but it wasn't. It was in front of Coca Pelli's, but again, Coca Pelli's got the blame it's, yeah. because it was. It, it wasn't even their fault, right. but it was in the news. It sure. was in front of Coca Pelli's. Sure. You know, how do you avoid getting that media attention? That negative media. That's attention? negative. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I don't know. It. That's completely out of my realm of expertise. You know, as far as a bar owner, you know, what I'm a bar owner, almost second to a music venue. You know, I, I like to think of myself as a music venue, mm -hmm. live music venue. So, you know, the, like I said, uh, you know, a dance crowd or, or <coughs> whatever else, you know, the 400 students coming down the street, that's totally out of my realm oh. of, 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 I mean to say expertise, just knowledge. So what's your uh, connection with Paulie's Hotel? Do you have a connection? Paulie's, uh, my cousin who owns the Comedy Works went to high school with John, the owner of uh, Paulie's. Mm -hmm. And introduced me years and years ago to him. You know, we always kept in contact. We're friendly. Said hello. And when Albany Med was coming down to uh, coming down, and the word was coming down, I started looking for venues. And John's like, "You got to come up here. You got to come up here. There's buy a building, whatever." And just so happens, you know, Cagney's had been closed for at the time almost five years. So we, we looked at it, and uh, you know, John's like. You, be great. We'll work together. And you know, he was shut down years ago John. for for underage over there. And he went down, uh, made his made his peace and everything. And it, rare in New York State for you to get a second chance. And he's received a second chance. And it's strictly twenty one and up there now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we work together. We do shows where you pay one admission, you get in both doors. I mean, they're just literally. It's even in the dead of winter, right? You know, you, which is you when want, WCDB had their thirty sixth annual right. anniversary uh, reunion, right. and that's what we did. We yeah. went, you know, it, and it worked out fine. Mm -hmm. um, you know, 
And you know, here when I left Valentine's, I was like, well, now I lose an upstairs and a downstairs going up and down, and it's kind of worked out well, you know. And and I like John, and we get along, and we're on the same page pretty much as far as uh, business wise goes. So, so uh, comedy works. The guy who owns the comedy works. Nick, right. Nick, Tommy, Nikki, yep. Nikki, yeah. yeah, yeah. My cousin Celia's son. I'm sorry. My cousin Celia, that's her son. Oh, so he's my second, third cousin. Yeah. I could, I, I know. Yeah, yeah. Tom. I'm related to everyone in this area. I know Tom Gershon's. Very well. That's yeah. that's my family's. Was my family was yeah. because now it's not Jewish. Tony, family. Tony, uh, yeah. Gloria bought it. Yeah, but that was okay. my uncle Irv, who's my uncle Bob. Yeah, so Put myself what? through college there. <laughs> yeah. So you have. Um, so are you tying in with Comedy Works at all to try to uh, team up? No, Tommy them? does his own. He does comedy. That's what he does. Right. So, um, you know, and if, if I do comedy, which we do it once a month, uh, open mic comedy, it's more like guerrilla theater almost. It's it's so far below the radar. <laughs> it's, um, you know, it's not I even... remember when he first started, and I tried to work with him and help him yeah. and all that, and it was phenomenal. Now, was that him was... or his father? His father. His father, Tom Sr. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're talking yeah. about so many, well, they're Jewish owners, you know, that yeah. into together with comedy. Right. Because in right. entertainment, you know, they know Hollywood is yeah. very big sure. in, in Jewish. Do sure. you have any connection from, like, the old country, or where did it come that your old family got into it? Again, uh, you know, Tommy's father worked at Gershon's. When he's from Brooklyn, he came up and uh, worked at Gershon's and then broke off and opened up the Deli Works, and somehow... You probably have to have him on and ask him. <laughs> Deli Works morphed into the Comedy Works. Right. And uh, that it, was over on 855 Central. On Central. And mm. he, he bopped around a little bit, but now he's, right. he's solid out on uh, Northern Boulevard. Right, right. across from yeah. Channel 10. Across from Channel 10. Yes. yes. I, yeah. I, I love it. I, I am a big fan of the yeah. Comedy Works. Yeah. But mm. I remember the Deli Works, and he had all the caricatures. From sure. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the... And entertainment's never a problem. I mean, you have enough entertainment. I guess if you're pulling from nationally, I would think regionally, then it would be how many bands are there? Yeah, uh, I couldn't even put a number on it. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, we're, we're trying to run, if at all possible, seven nights a week. But for the most part, we, um, we do Wednesday through Saturday, solid music. And then um, the, sec the first and third Tuesdays of the month, we do uh, an open mic poetry. Second Tuesday of the month, and we people do come. And people, come. people, not exactly a raucous audience. <laughs> not a raucous audience, <laughs> and that's again why when you ask me about this other stuff, I'm like, I, I really don't. I'm so out of touch but with. People do come. You have a good crowd. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. But I would think you'd have to be prepared for the possibility that that could happen at your bar, we, and then we, you we were we were on St. Patrick's Day. We were like, hey, this is going to be nuts, and as it turned out, it was nuts down on Pearl Street, and we mm -hmm. were standing around at five o'clock, twiddling our thumbs, going. <gasps> That's not good. Not really. What are you doing no. for Halloween? <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens. Okay. But we're, we're generally, we're, we're, we're pretty much prepared all the time. Well, that's why I'm asking, yeah. because I, I thought that you would, yeah. you know, what preparedness that you're learning could be, I mean, because Coca Pelli's is Jewish owned also. Oh, is it? I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, Joe Glick. Okay. So I'm trying to see yeah. if maybe there's a connection that no. you could help him with and... Maybe help restore that name. Maybe, I mean, maybe try to do live, live music. Why did you rebrand and why didn't you carry over Valentine's? This, people have asked Ask, me this. Yeah, they and, asked and, me and that. And some people have gotten really upset about it. Like, you know, the, the family member has decided that they don't want to be. You know, Valentine's was at 17 New Scotland Avenue. It was downstairs and upstairs. It was two floors uh, and it was what it was. You know, before that it was Papa's place. So it wasn't always Valentine's. Um, so they asked me, why did you change it? Well, for as many people that loved, and there's two reasons. For as many people that loved Valentine's and thought it was the greatest place in the world and didn't mind having their shoes stick to the floor <laughs> and a real dirty place, there were other people that only went in there once to see a friend play or right. meet somebody who thought, this is the most disgusting place in the world and the bartenders are rude and the music's loud. Okay, you know, I, I'd like to be everything to everyone. It, I, you know, that's that's my my goal. Uh, well, I wasn't far off with what I told you was the impression. That right, I right, from... but you know, but we all knew better. <laughs> you know, and you know, you, you don't stay open for 16, exactly. 17 years without having so, some redeeming right, qualities. Right, so that yes. was one reason why we wanted to you know change the name. Although I met some resistance from the staff in, internally, and the other one was, 
when agents call now from California, Chicago, whatever, to, to book their band at Valentine's, yeah, we want to put it in the big room. We're thinking we're going to get 300 people. I don't have that room anymore. Mm -hmm. So now it's having to go through it every day with a booking agent or two or three or four or a band that books right. themselves. It's like, you know what, it's so much easier if we do this, it's a new start. You know what, it's a new building, it's a new room. Um, and we're, and but we're doing the same thing. And people that know, that love the place, know where to find us. And the people that hated it, they think this is a new place. Right. And they're gonna give it a shot. And you know what it is, it's cleaner. And uh, you know the food is, right. if I do say so myself, is much better. <laughs> and uh, the sound system is great. And it's, it's an intimate place. And it's our clubhouse. It's basically right. the music lover of the Capital District. It's our, it's our clubhouse. It's our new hangout. So when you, um, when you named Valentine's, you opened within a day or two of Valentine's Day, yeah, we, is what I read. Well, we, we shut down on a Saturday night. It was in February. I, 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 yeah, we were open on Valentine's Day in the new place. Shut down on a Saturday night, cleaned everything out on Sunday. And don't forget, I had been over there since September cleaning it up fixing it up, getting everything moved in. So within two days, we were open on a Tuesday for um, a soft opening. And then Wednesday, our Grateful Dead cover band that I inherited at Valentine's that's been playing for yeah. 20 plus years on Wednesday nights, came in and we just, we didn't miss a beat. No pun intended. No pun intended. <laughs> but how did you come up with the low beat? That mm -hmm. is a album title and a song title by uh, my favorite band. In the world, which so, is the Young Fresh Fellows out Young of Seattle, Fresh. Washington. Okay. Yep. Are you getting them to play? Or? They last time they ever came out this way, they actually played Valentine's. They're all in their fifties or so now. Okay. Um, they can afford the plane trip. Well, the the, the singer can. He was in REM for seventeen okay. years or so. There you so. go. He can afford five uh, plane tickets. They only play in Seattle and Portland, pretty much. And you don't have any pull to get them. You know, he stopped in a couple weeks ago because he was playing in another band, he stopped in to see it and he took a picture of it and sent it back to the guys and they're like, we have to play here now. And I said, that's not gonna happen, is it? He goes, e probably not, <laughs> probably not. I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna take you know, some benefactor to fly them out to the East Coast to do some shows. It, it might happen. Listen, if they ever come out this way and they wanna play, I don't care who's booked that night, they will play that. Do you night. ever work with other venues? Like there's one, I think, up in Clifton Park still. Oh, the uh, Upstate Concert Hall. Upstate Concert yep. Hall or the Egg or whatever where, when, or is the Egg too close maybe, but do you work with Troy Music Hall or some other venues that you can, like, like what Tom Nicky did, he just, you know, he would have the comedian, the, the comics come mm -hmm. and not just play Albany, but they'd play with the Kingston sure. or they might play another place and, you know, they'd make right. the most out of their time. Can you do that formula um, with other acts? Not really, just because all the places are too close. We like, you know, if, if someone's playing in Kingston, I tell the agent, I go, well, they really shouldn't play here because it's still too close. Really? You know, it's, uh, if it's within an hour, hour and a half, I st Northampton is, is pretty much the outer limits. Um, Massachusetts. And, yeah, and they don't need any help with, with booking for right. me. The one guy runs the town. Um, you know, to do something in Saratoga, I, it's, it depends. Okay. It, it could happen. But I don't really, I mean, I'm, I know everyone. I know Ted up at Upstate Concert Hall. I'm good friends with him. Friends with Mike over at uh, Bogey's. Uh, Brian at the Ale House right. in Troy. Oh, you, you're you yeah. well known. I mean, yeah. well, hopefully it's in, not. In, in a lot of circles, you're yeah. a star. Well. And I wanted to say that publicly. Th then so. I should be driving a star's vehicle instead yeah. of my, my pickup truck. But, well, thank you. You might just like a pickup truck. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. Actually, I so? do. <laughs> I do like a pickup truck. truck. <laughs> yeah, if you need anything hauled, let me know. Yeah. I'll, I, I'll use that. Okay. Oh, well, I'm telling you, it's really a pleasure to have you on. Oh, I've known great to you be for here. so many years. Yeah. and. You are such a, a gem for this community, and we, it would be a loss if you weren't here and it'd be a void. So I don't know where I'm going to go. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Howie, thanks very much for Thank being you. on the Jewish Fuel and a lot of success in what you're doing. Thank you and, very much. And do it with good health. Uh, absolutely. Please. Oh, Thank you. <laughs>